An abandoned elderly woman who frequented a cafe noticed a single parent having to deal with his son and wanted to assist him. He was so appreciative that he did something she could never have thought would change her life. Good morning, Ella, Hannah said to the waitress at the local cafe she frequented. She didn't have much money, but going out for coffee every day helped her stay sane in her old age. Everyone knew who she was, and the proprietors frequently refused to let her pay since they were aware of her circumstances. Hannah has a son, George, who lives in New York and is dissatisfied with his elderly mother in Florida. She lives on her pension and, thankfully, her house is paid for, albeit it is old. However, due to escalating prices and unanticipated property repairs, her monthly budget has constantly been cut. Hannah wanted to ask George for money to fix up her house but didn't want to trouble him, so she cut back on costs and tried to mend things gradually. Hannah sat at her normal table and ordered a coffee and a muffin. She gazed around the cafe, which was not particularly busy that morning. Some of the individuals she recognized, but there was a father with a little son at an adjacent table who Hannah had never seen before. On the table was some paperwork from the man. Or were they building plans? She pondered, unable to see from her vantage point. In any case, he was completely concentrated until the boy began crying, an ear-piercing cry that made everyone turn around. Joshua! Joshua! Shush! The guy tried to soothe the youngster down, but he refused. His small arms flew into a rage, knocking over a cup of coffee and making a large mess. Hannah couldn't sit still because the man was so agitated. She took a step forward, walked over, and distracted the boy. Hey, kid! Hey! You're the most handsome boy ever, she said as she sat down and made funny faces and lovely phrases to distract the toddler. The man thanked her and began cleaning up the mess with the waiter's assistance. Fortunately, Joshua seemed to settle down as a result of Hannah's attention, and she started feeding him when their dinner arrived. Ella made the decision to carry Hannah's coffee and muffin to that table so she could remain with them. I appreciate that so much, ma'am. Joshua is not an easy child, the father explained. My name is Patrick. It's a pleasure to meet you, Patrick. My name is Hannah, Hannah said, remaining concentrated on feeding the boy. At some time, all newborns are hazy. It's just a phase. Patrick exhaled a sigh. No, I don't believe so. Our pediatrician believes he is autistic. I need to take him for additional testing, but I've been so busy. Oh, but I heard that's a treatable problem nowadays with various treatments and therapies, right? Hannah expressed concern. Yeah, but I'm a single father with my own business. I don't have the time, Patrick explained, shaking his head. It pains me that he has me, and I don't have much time. When he was born, his mother left. Several nannies have already quit on me. Well, you simply have to create the time. I too was a single mother who had to labor to the bone while raising my son, Hannah replied, raising one eyebrow. He's now a successful businessman in New York. You can do it if I can do it. I hope so, he sighed, a small smile on his face. What about this? I can observe him. I'll be his babysitter. He's a lovely child. I believe he likes me. Let's do it, Hannah said, smiling broadly. The man exhaled a sigh of satisfaction, as if Hannah had provided all of the universe's answers. He thanked her heartily, and they continued to enjoy their brunch. At some point, the destitute older woman admitted that, despite her son's success, he didn't call or send her money, leaving her on her own. The single parent listened closely as she complained about her house needing too many repairs. He then told her more about his relationship with Joshua's mother, 
which was, to put it mildly, poisonous. Hannah couldn't recall the last time she had such a meaningful chat with someone. Patrick had to leave soon to take Joshua to an appointment for additional testing. Hannah provided him her address and phone number, as well as the assurance that she would not charge for babysitting. It'll be a pleasure to finally feel useful again, she added as she kissed him goodbye. Patrick called her a few hours later, asking her to babysit. He dropped Joshua off, but stopped for a cup of tea before departing. Joshua dozed off on Hannah's couch at some point. She was picking things up and rummaging through her purse for gum when she came upon something strange. She took out a sheet of paper and noticed the stationery of a nearby building company. Her brow furrowed when she noticed it was a certificate for $50,000 in house repairs. It was just what she required, but she had no idea how it ended up in her luggage. Until Patrick arrived to pick up Joshua. Did you happen to witness it? What's in your purse? He inquired, conspiratorially smiling. Was it you? How can you provide such a service? Hannah inquired, happy and surprised. I own that business. That's why I don't have any time, he shrugged. Are you certain about this? It takes a lot of money and effort, she inquired. I'm sure, he comforted her, and they hugged despite the fact that they had only met that morning. Patrick brought Joshua to Hannah virtually every day for babysitting, and his business soon began working on fixing her house. It looked better than ever and Patrick added a bathroom and kitchen refurbishment, which he didn't tell her was worth far more than the coupon he gave her. Hannah's house was unrecognizable six months later, and she was happier than ever. Joshua had been formally diagnosed with autism, but the older woman had been there for him the entire time. When Patrick couldn't, she took him to therapies and watched him as if he were her own grandchild. Surprisingly, her son George paid a visit and was surprised to see Patrick with his son, enjoying a nice lunch with his mother. Hannah told George everything, and he couldn't believe how happy she was. She told him about Patrick's free house renovations and how well Joshua was doing in treatment. George was nearly envious of their relationship, but he recognized he earned it after abandoning his mother for so long. He had intended to return home because he despised New York and had found an outstanding job in the neighborhood. He began paying frequent visits to Hannah after that, and he also grew in love with Joshua. George and Patrick soon became like brothers, sticking by one another through thick and thin. Hannah couldn't believe it had all come about because she had been friendly to those strangers at the cafe.